America in 1968 was a land in torment and chaos. This is America, but you almost have to shoot somebody, burn yourself alive, do something violent in order to get any attention at all, however patient you have been or however well you have put your case. What we want is a system where people can get on television without writing and without breaking the law. What we had in the 60s was people going into the streets to get access. And, in fact, what we had was what I call a system of access by demonstration. The only way you could present your message effectively was by getting into the 6 o'clock news. I remember one time I was in a demonstration in front of the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. It was a civil rights demonstration, and the realtors were having a big meeting inside. We weren't getting any attention. There were 20 or 30 of us there, and the leader said, okay, into the streets. I didn't feel good about it, but I got into the street with everybody else. We held up traffic. The police arrived. The press arrived. We made the 6 o'clock news, and we got our message to the public. Now, I said, there's got to be a better way. A lot of people said the same thing. There's got to be a better way. And that's what we set out to find. Free speech has got to mean more than the right to wail on a street corner. The First Amendment to the Constitution provides that people sh should have the freedom to speak and express their ideas. Now, this means absolutely nothing if you don't have a place where you can deliver the ideas. And the important place today, if you're going to be talking to people other than to yourself, is to be able to get into the powerful broadcasting media and say what your message is. That's the right that we claim in these things, is that we have a right to be effective and to get on television where people are watching and listening. So that the ideas don't have to exist in a vacuum or be proverbially hid un hidden under a bushel somewhere. They can be right out in the open and looked at by people, and people can act on those ideas. Free speech message is a short message. It's only 60 seconds long. It's a spot message. In that respect, it's like a commercial. But while commercials originate from corporations, we want these messages to come from people. And while commercials are profit-oriented, we want these messages to be issue-oriented and free speech-oriented. So we say, well, what works for General Motors and Procter & Gamble can also work for people. The technology shouldn't just exist to meet the needs of corporations. It should also exist to meet the needs of people and meet the needs of democracy. So we say that message which has impact on television, which really does the work as opposed to just build audiences, is that spot message. Free speech message is a uh, very definite and pretty clear-cut idea. The, the idea is that the community is entitled to produce small segments, somewhat similar to advertisements, and get these broadcast uh, within the broadcast day. Now, we think this is an excellent idea, and the way we try to approach the broadcasters is first by negotiating with them. And what do I mean by the process of negotiating in this case? It's this. We contact the broadcasters and arrange for an interview with one of the men in the office, perhaps the station manager himself, and then we tell them the basic idea and ask them to come and meet us with, in a larger group where we can formally go over exactly what it is we have in mind. Generally, a short message, like a 60-second short message. It may be a little bit longer message, but we describe all of this and we go over the details with the broadcasters to the extent that they think it's necessary. The broadcaster, in response, may say, well, I've got so many things that I've got to get in within the three minutes that are allotted me during the uh, uh, time uh, when we're not broadcasting something which is, is put over uh, national network television time. And they'll give us a series of technical responses, and then we'll listen to those and come back and say, well, of course you've got limitations on what you can do technically. But if you'll rearrange this and rearrange that, you can still accomplish broadcasting these free speech messages. And then, of course, our trump card is that 
they can't say, well, they don't have any time for short messages because the lifeblood of the station is a short message in the form of an advertisement. So there's simply no way that the station manager can honestly tell us we can't have a short message. The short message is there. And now the only question is, are some of the soap commercials and the other commercials that are on television going to move over a little bit and allow the short message to include something that's of extreme value to the community, that is also of extreme importance to a major segment of the community that has something that it wants to say. What I'd like to make a, a very honest statement about is that I was quite concerned about this whole concept in the beginning. Concerned for one basic reason. Uh, we were approached and asked to, uh, to create these things under the general title of a free speech message. Uh, that concerned me because of the fact that I had felt and do feel that uh, Channel 7 in particular, KGO TV, had been providing maybe some of the most meaningful access to the public through existing formats. And that free speech was a very real thing with us and it had been really one of the mainstays of our operating philosophy. Hey, journalism is just not a substitute for free speech. Even the best journalism is no substitute. Journalism is event-oriented, and free speech is sometimes idea-oriented. Journalism is fact-oriented, but free speech is action-oriented often. It's not the journalist's job to organize a social response to the news he reports, or to get people to do something about the problems that he tells us about. That's the job of community leaders, but they can't do that job unless they have an opportunity to exercise freedom of speech in an effective way. So, the free speech message is an attempt to supplement the good job that journalists do by providing people an opportunity to do things that journalists just would never try to do. When a group has developed something new and exciting and wants to see it on television, it's got to get the television station to adopt this new idea in one way or another. The starting point for us is to negotiate with this television station, to get in touch with its general manager or the program director and say at the first opportunity, look, we have a good new idea, listen to us and see what it is. But actually, before we make our first approach to any one of the broadcasters, there's a tremendous amount of homework that's been done. We usually go into a negotiating session with a broadcaster very well informed on exactly what the broadcaster is doing to serve the community. We have organized monitors that will watch the broadcast day and see exactly what the station's putting on the, on the air from the morning until the evening. We have people that will sit down and go over the license performance of the television station. They'll go to the television station and say, we want to see your files. They'll get portions of the files directly from the FCC and review all of this material before we ever get into a negotiating session at all. So we've got our ammunition when we sit down with the broadcasters. We know what the broadcaster's been doing. We know what our legal position is. We know what the rationale is for what it is we want the station to do. So we're all ready to go. The free speech message idea, I thought, would infer that free speech or freedom of speech had not, in fact, been uh, in existence. But upon uh, consideration and in talking to the Committee for Open Media, and uh, I, I came to one, I think, very full realization, and that was that various formats that were in existence at that time did provide organizations an opportunity to express their points of view. But other than authors or people who had reached a certain celebrity status, it we really didn't afford the average guy. The, I always refer to it as the first 100 people off of the next bus uh, that rolls up. An opportunity to, to have access to television and to express their points of view about whatever problems uh, they feel are the most important. Uh, it just simply was not being done anywhere in any media. And, uh, and we felt that uh, this whole idea of providing public access to television had some real merit. Uh, from that point on, it was really a matter of trying to work out all of the logistics uh, to stay on the right side of the law as far as the Federal Communications Commission is concerned, stay within our own company's uh, uh, policies, which incidentally were liberalized to adopt this philosophy. And uh, in my opinion, it's worked extremely well. 
I would like to bring to your attention a new project which KTVU will begin in January. In concert with several other television stations in the Bay Area, we will be presenting three free speech messages a week. These messages will be taped at the KTVU studios and will be presented with no charge to the person or group represented. If you or your group wish to avail yourselves of one of these free speech messages, send us a letter at this address telling us what you wish to say. If our screening committee selects your letter, you will be contacted and a taping session will be arranged. No message will be denied solely because it is controversial. However, we may not accept messages from political candidates or those speaking in their behalf. Nor can we accept messages which are libelous, slanderous, contrary to law, or are subject to ballot. We hope that you will watch for these free speech messages, and we look forward to hearing any comments you may have regarding them. My name is Enid, and these are my children. But only one will learn that the world is wide open. Only one child might become an astronaut or the president and only one child will earn enough money for self-support. The other child will meet a very different future. The other child will soon be told about the proper way to live. Only the lowest paying jobs will be offered, and the chances are much greater that the other child will be on the welfare rolls. One child is my son, the other my daughter. The National Organization for Women is fighting for the other child. Join us at your local chapter. Do you ever wonder about the individuals who claim that freedom of speech means the right to silence another speaker? And have you noticed that acts of naked force are being sanctioned in the name of free speech? Last year, I witnessed a campus rally of students gathered for the well-advertised purpose of deciding which university building to take over. Reporters did not consider it newsworthy that the university itself had provided the place and equipment used to organize the ensuing raid. Had the university refused to provide the means to hold the rally, it would have been accused of abridging free speech. But a guardian of reason, a university, does not ennoble itself by remaining silent while its own microphones are being used to proclaim the triumph of brute force. Yellow Cab Company has a proposal before the Board of Supervisors to raise the taxi fares in San Francisco. San Francisco already has just about the highest fares in the country. Yellow Cab claims that they are going broke. I suggest that this might be due to poor management, since no other cab company is having this problem. We're in a period of inflation. As it is now, the people of San Francisco can't afford to take a cab. I know I can't, and I'm a cab driver. Where do we stop? Where do we draw the line? An increase in fares does not necessarily mean an increase in revenue. On the contrary, it would probably mean a decrease in revenue. If you feel the same as I do, please come to the Board of Supervisors meeting. The date will be announced. Thank you. Disgusting. Fantastic. Go away, you pervert. Come on. I'll show you a great time. Mention sex, and these are some of the reactions. Wouldn't it be nice to receive no other reaction than, it's beautiful? The next time the incubus or succubus of your dreams visits you, realize your fantasies. Discover the proper role that sex should play in your life. Sexual freedom is both the freedom from unreal sexual desires and the freedom to make real sexual desires possible. How do you do? Several months ago, I told you of our free speech message project, and I suggested that you send us your thoughts on a controversial matter with your request for airtime. The response was excellent, and because of this, we are going to, at least temporarily, continue with the project. I am once again inviting you to request free speech message time. Send us what you wish to say on a controversial issue in 100 words. If our screening committee chooses your message, we will contact you and will arrange a taping session. Your 50-second message will be seen three times. One of these airings will be in prime time. We cannot accept anything that is libelous, slanderous, or contrary to law. 
nor may we accept political candidates or matters subject to ballot. Please send your request to Free Speech Message, KTVU Channel 2, 1 Jack London Square, Oakland. No message will be denied solely because it is controversial. We found that, uh, that this is a, a very solid new technique. Um, our experience with it today proves that the public wants it, that they will use it, and that it does indeed serve a purpose. And that, after all, is what we're in the business to do. Uh, I believe it's a very viable means of communications, and I endorse it with all my heart. Uh, I believe that it could conceivably find its way into other forms, program forms or other forms. I'm not suggesting that uh, KGO TV in San Francisco has found the absolute perfect way to do it, but I would recommend it to any broadcaster as a true means of dealing with the public and providing the public with a, with a very solid means of communications of ideas. The San Jose Media Conglomeration. Right. El Barrio, the San Jose Sun. The Chicano Airways Program Committee. The Estudiantes de Aslan. La Familia. The Committee for Open Media. <laughs> Times are changing. Channel 11, KLIV, and many other stations are now offering a chance for individuals, organizations, to present free speech messages. Yeah. <laughs> this country needs the truth. Yeah. Right. 2% yeah. of the people own 80% of all stocks and get 80% of all corporate profit. Mm. A child sees 330,000 commercials mm. on TV before the age of 18. Mm. That's bad. Mm. This is a free speech message. You do one. Your country needs you on TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't believe it. Who are you to be on TV, you tell us? Yeah. Well, who are we to be here? Shall we leave TV to the soap companies and General Motors? No! That's not democracy. No. Right. Your country needs you on TV! Yeah. Yeah. Viewers express their opinions with free speech messages.